Hello and welcome to this Sunday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. We're so glad you could have joined us. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson, and I'll be with you for the next half hour. So stick and stay with us. we we'll soon come back. On Get the Facts this week, we zero in on Jamaica's expanded program of immunization, plus how to access the flu vaccine. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. For the next few minutes, we will engage in a vibrant discussion on Jamaica's expanded program of immunization, plus the flu vaccine and the importance of these safeguards to our health. Here with us to share more information on Get the Facts is Director of Family Health Services within the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Julia Rowe Porter. Dr. Rowe Porter, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Theodore. All right, let's jump right into getting some facts now. Immunization is used globally, to, and everybody has heard the word immunize, and of course things like vaccine and whatnot. So it's used globally to save millions of people, and uh, it's definitely important to Jamaica's health strategy. Now, in the, in the intro, I had mentioned the expanded immunization program. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what that program is and what it's meant to do? Sure. So I have to go down memory lane. Please. Uh, about... A hundred years ago, not even so long, in the 1940s, mm -hmm. the common illness of the day was infection. So a lot of infectious illnesses, including polio, measles, other vaccine-preventable diseases, right. were what was killing our people. That was caused, our main causes of death, mm -hmm. including children. And that was a travesty yeah. where our infant mortality rate was 100 to 200 per thousand live births. When you work that out, that's, you know, one to two children per 10 mm -hmm. births. And that's mm -hmm. really uh, significant. Awful. That's yeah. awful. Yeah. So with the advances in health, including vaccination, nutrition, sanitation, there was control over these infections and frequent outbreaks. Mm -hmm. So you'd have a lot of outbreaks affecting children and there were high death rates. And with vaccination campaigns, they eventually, over the decades, minimized the deaths and the disability until in the 1970s, the vaccination program became more organized. And in mm -hmm. 1977, you had uh, the expanded program on immunization being a major intervention at the international level. And in Jamaica, it was established September 1977. Oh, so the expanded bit is coming from the more organized, the more... Yes, that and the expansion in the number of vaccines that ah, were produced. So okay. polio and measles were the main uh, diseases of concern, right. killing our children, and of course smallpox as well. And so in the 1980s, the outbreaks became less. We started introducing new vaccines like BCG for tuberculosis, and then with time... Um, there's a rubella, diphtheria, pertussis, right. tetanus. You know what's interesting? You, you, you mentioned a while ago things like polio and whatnot. I don't hear nothing about those anymore. But, well. but, but hold on, hold on. <laughs> I want to ask something before we get there. You have underlined children in this yes. line of thought. And uh, as far as I am aware, that usually for back to school, immunization is required. As the children have to be immunized. Now, how does this work for the parents out there? So children are our major target group because they're a vulnerable population right. because their, immune, their immune systems are weaker than the adults, especially the newborns and the infants, their immune systems are underdeveloped. So, I mean, even naturally, breastfeeding has antibodies that it naturally immunize children to protect mm. them. So right. children need to be protected. Right. And we've found that vaccines have been very effective in stimulating their immune system, persons would remember getting vaccinated in school because yes, yes exactly. <laughs> I've got I got the, mark. the the BCG, the the polio drops yeah, that you, yeah. the nurse used to come to school and give you, because even when the before the program was established, schools were targeted because children congregated there, 
And when you have right, masses of people congregating in a space, then that is a ripe environment for diseases to uh, spread and outbreaks. I'm disappointed you didn't say super spreader. <laughs> It's a super spreader. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the schools were targeted. Yeah. And in 1986, the government of Jamaica thought it was so important to prioritize vaccination of children, especially in the school setting, that our immunization regulations were promulgated mm. to protect our children. And we have made so many achievements since then because we've, eradic we've seen the, the back of polio and measles, the last case of polio was in 1982. Mm. Last case of measles, locally transmitted measles in Jamaica was 1991. Right. And uh, diphtheria, pertotus, tetanus, rubella up to 2001 because we have such a robust vaccination program that has really had high achievement. We've, we've done so well that we've forgotten what these diseases it's look true. like. It's the true. doctors and nurses of today haven't diagnosed these diseases That's because true. we haven't seen them in decades. And uh, so, so this is based, there is a law governing vaccination. That's, you that's mentioned correct. It. So the law says that all children under the age of seven have to be adequately immunized for their age mm -hmm. for registration to school. So if they are found not to be fully vaccinated for their age, then they should not be registered for school and they are the, the school operators, parents, healthcare workers are liable if they allow children to attend. And, and this applies to daycares, nurseries, right. basic schools, primary schools, all children. So these vaccinations happen prior to you attending school? And yes, and they're given from birth. So BCG, hepatitis B are given at birth in the hospital. And then in infancy, five other antigens or vaccines are given at three months, uh, well, six weeks, three months, and six months. At one year old, you have another set. MMR is given at one year old mm -hmm. and at 18 months, and then you get booster doses right. uh, at 18 months. And then prior to entering primary school, you get another set of boosters. Right. And there's a, another booster that is given before high school, um, which is uh, diphtheria, portus, diphtheria tetanus, mm -hmm. and we've introduced HPV, human papillomavirus as well, which we give to children. So it's the whole span of children from yeah. birth to pre-adolescence, adolescence. We have to ensure that all of them are up to date based on their age. You know, I, 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 there's a question I want to ask, but we have to break. We have to break now. So I'm going to come back right after the break. You don't want to miss this. Please stay with us. <laughs> Mosquitoes will breed in containers that hold water. Tightly cover water storage containers such as drums, buckets, and tanks, or cover the water surface with cooking oil. Punch holes in all tins, plastic containers, and boxes to prevent the collection of water before disposal. Cover old tires or fill with dirt. Scrub all vases once per week to remove mosquito eggs and dispose of garbage by placing in plastic bags. Do your part to prevent mosquito breeding. A message from the Ministry of Health. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We are continuing our conversation with Dr. Ro Porto, Director of Family Health Services at the Ministry of Health and Wellness. We're discussing Jamaica's immunization program, plus the protection we can get from taking the flu vaccine. Doc, to continue the, the, the thread that we were on just before we broke, you were listing out how vaccination happens throughout childhood, and somebody's asking the question, what if I miss? That's a good question. Um, no. There are several opportunities to get vaccinated. Uh, well child visits, the, one of the main focuses of the visit is to get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. If you miss, you can go back to the same facility or any facility right. and say you missed it and you can catch up. You don't have to repeat, you just have to catch up. And it's important you get your vaccines on time because the earlier you are fully protected, then the, the more protected you are. I mean, if you delay your protection, then you're more vulnerable if we get an, uh, an outbreak, God forbid, yeah. of any of these diseases. And we want to ensure that our target of 95% is met, meaning of 100 children. Our target. Yes. Of 100 children, we want at least 95% of them to be vaccinated. 
Jamaica, you know, we like exceeding at everything, so we aim for 100. Right. But there are a few children whose immune systems are weak and may not be eligible for vaccination for medical reasons. So we have to protect them. Mm -hmm. So they will be in those few that, are, that can't get vaccinated. And it's the rest of the population that has to uh, be protected to protect them. Mm -hmm. And that's called herd immunity. Right. So it's important that as many children as possible, m most if not all are vaccinated if they're eligible so that we can have that herd immunity. Okay, so that, that target, I'm sticking on target, that 95% you laid out, is that a 95% of children or is that a Jamaica specific immunization target? So it's for children, but of course, as they grow older, because that immunity lasts a lifetime for most mm -hmm. of the vaccines. So if all, if all our children are vaccinated with decades, right. then our entire population will ah. be immune. And that's what, how we can keep the diseases out and also uh, prevent the spread in the families. The right. children will come home and the parents will be exposed to other members of the family. So our whole population is where, what we want to protect, but the children are at risk of the most vulnerable so we start outcomes. There. We start there as well. Okay, so 95% is our target. I have got to ask, how are we doing in terms of that target? So we were concerned during COVID because, you know, when you're in emergency mode, the, the resources are shunted to dealing with that emergency and that may have caused a shift from the routine program and some uh, access to care may have been affected. Our target, we didn't meet our target for most of our antigens, is what we call them. Mm -hmm. In 2021, we were in the 80s. And you may say, oh, well, that's not so bad. It's just like a, you're doing a test. 80s is like an well, A and not an A plus. But it's important. Yes. Because say you have a school of 100 children, and your coverage is 80. 20 of your children are not fully immunized. It means if you get one of those diseases in the school, if, mm -hmm. if it's introduced, then you can have an outbreak. Yeah, 20 is significant. 20 is significant compared to five or two or one, yeah. right? So we, if we are not careful and not vigilant to close that gap, then we're gonna be in trouble. Have because, we? Well, yes we are. This year we had a catch-up vaccination program starting late last year into summer. And, you know, school medical season is in the summer where, you know, yes, persons yes. are getting their medicals to go into school. And we use that as an opportunity to engage parents and ensure that they take their cards in and that their children are up to date. And if they're not, that we vaccinate them. So we see trends that we are um, meeting our target. We're closing that gap. We're yeah. pretty good on our, our targets so far. Ah, um, so right. we're grateful to Jamaica for responding <laughs> and, and, and seeing the importance of vaccination. Right. I've got two more questions for you. I'm going to try to crunch them down as, as, as tightly as I can. It's, it's, we're about to enter flu season, and I understand government provides flu vaccines yearly as a safeguard. Yes. And uh, who should get va the flu vaccines and why? So influenza, may, you may think of it as, oh, just a little cold. You can just get it the disease instead of the vaccine, but influenza can be pretty serious. It can cause severe illness and death, especially in vulnerable groups like young children, mm. as well as elderly persons, persons with chronic illnesses like heart disease, diabetes, weakened immune systems, mm -hmm. healthcare workers as well that have to take care of ill persons. Lots of exposure. Be lots of exposure, yeah. and they can pass the flu virus onto their sick patients. Right. So we target those vulnerable groups during the flu season, which starts about October and can last um, into next year as, as late as May. And we ask that those persons go to their health centers. Um, the flu vaccine is available at all vaccination points, over 300 across the island, and even some hospitals, of course, you know, they have clinics so they can get right. the vaccine right. at their chronic disease clinics um, and ask for it. Um, it's available. Um, we target those priority groups, but I mean, I don't think we'll turn away someone that really wants to get it. Yeah, yeah. We target the vulnerable groups. We also target frontline workers like our police and our soldiers that are working on, on the front line to protect us. Um, mm -hmm. So that's our uh, essential services stand up yeah. in the flu season. Now you don't have a lot of absenteeism um, right, and, right. and a lot of illness in, in our key services. All right, so Dr. Roporta, we're in the final moments of getting the facts, and uh, I'd like you to close us out with, uh, it's a question from me, but it's probably a testimony from you. Okay. All right, you mentioned several diseases that we've seen the back of. 
you know, uh, in the final few seconds, can you just speak to the efficacy of immunization and how important it is for us to be on board? Okay, so we are victims of our own success, meaning we've done so well as a country, we've gotten international awards for our program and it's to the point where we, we've forgotten what these diseases do. We can't slip and slide and say, well, what's the point? We're not mm. seeing them, let's not get vaccinated, because if we do, then we'll go back to the era yep. where we're suffering from these deadly diseases. So Jamaica, if you need information, if you want more, if you want to know more about why and if you need to get vaccinated, then talk to a healthcare provider, go to a credible source, and know that um, we are on track to protecting our country. Vaccination is a very cost-effective and safe intervention. It's worked for years, um, and we want to protect Jamaica and maximize our health through vaccination. Remember to check your child's immunization status and ensure they are fully immunized for their age. Based on what Dr. Ro Porter just said, it's not just you, it's about everyone. So your children are important, family members are important. Get the facts about immunization and vaccination out there in your life. This has been Get the Facts. Our guest has been Director of Family Health Services in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Julia Ro Porter. Thank you for watching and until next time, I'm Theodore Henry. Take good care. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. The country's on a high alert as dengue cases continue to rise across all parishes. Here from the Health and Wellness Minister, Dr. Christopher Tufton, as he shares the government's response. All parishes have had cases of dengue reported. Confirmed cases were detected in Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Thomas, St. Catherine, Westmoreland, Portland, and St. Anne. When you look from the per population perspective, the parishes in Southeast, St. Thomas, Kingston, and St. Andrew, and St. Catherine have the highest dengue uh, activities at this particular time. Now, it must be noted that while Jamaica has seen continuous local transmission of dengue, um, the Aegis aegypti mosquito, as you know, is endemic to Jamaica, and we have had this virus um, in its you know, usual trends since 1977, it's important to note uh, from a public health perspective that the type 2 strain, which is the dominant strain among the positive cases identified, has not predominated in the population since 2010. The significance of this is that it heightens the risk of a possible outbreak. There are four strains. If you get one, then you could get the other three and less likely to get the one that you got. In this instance, because of the long period since we have identified the strain two, um, the likelihood, particularly of the younger population, uh, being at a higher risk is, 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 is greater. Part of the call from the Ministry of Health and Wellness is to encourage parents to treat children who have a fever with paracetamol and to avoid aspirin and aspirin-like medications such as ibuprofen. The Ministry 
of health and wellness continues to encourage Jamaicans to, of course, do the, the, the traditional response, uh, effective response, which is to search for and destroy mosquito breeding sites in and around the home, the school, communities, and to protect themselves from the possibility of being contaminated by, by the dengue virus. Fogging and treatment of breeding sites have been intensified with fogging activities extended to seven days per week. Among the actions that are going to be and have begun is additional funding uh, to support things like bulky waste and uh, some drain cleaning based on where the vector index, is that what we call it, is highest, where the Aegis Gypti has been detected in communities, low-lying areas where water, water is, is present, even in the drought. The National Health Fund has allocated $200 million to support that activity. There will be a, 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 an allocation to um, councillors, municipal authorities, I should say, through local government, to give some support to political representatives at the municipal level. We have approximately 60 vehicles available across the country to facilitate intensified activities. Yes, walk right over there and drop it in the bin. Reuse that wastewater from your kitchen for the garden. Get your hands dirty and plant a tree. Farmers, hold off on the pesticides, especially near our rivers. Do your part to protect our watersheds so we can preserve the source of our drinking water. Every act to protect our watersheds counts. Start now. We are observing Senior Citizens Month and what better way to mark this special observance than with one of our very own centenarians. Mrs. Hazel Veronica Espute, ladies and gentlemen, who turned 106 in January of this year, is showing no signs of slowing down. Oh, to be alive in such an age! What must that saying be like for the woman who lived during World War II or was already a full-blown adult during colonial Jamaica? Here she is memorizing the then national anthem. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? What was it like growing up in Jamaica in, in, in the 1970s? Far, far different now. It was wonderful, you know, people could um, relate to each other. Raised in McIntyre Villa, Hazel stresses that though she was born at 2 Somerset Avenue, she came to Vineyard Town as a tiny thing, and so it is this part of the Little Rock that she claims. She reminisces about having a wonderful childhood in a two-parent household with her three brothers and all the love it had. But Miss Hazel's greatest love is cooking. A stalwart in her community, she was always preparing food for its members. Her favorite meal to prepare? Oh Lord, it's two peas. <laughs> Add some curry goat, some stewed beef and rice and peas to that. The mom of two, who was a housewife, also worked briefly as a hairdresser. What was the, the, the hairstyle that most people wanted you to do for them? The, the uh, bang. You remember when the bang used to be in, and the, what do you call it now? I forget these things, you know. But the bang, I remember, it used to come down right over the forehead and high up. What do you used to call that now? Cutter. You remember that name? <laughs> I forget the other name, but that time was that name. She's very fond of her club and the work that she does in her community. I had the club running. It started in 1977. And so every year I'm out. And I have the treat, the treat for the children. After the, um, after the anniversary is the treat for the children. And then I'm out here all the way to, to, to carry on with those things. It's work that has been recognized by many organizations, bestowing their love and appreciation for the wonderful things she continues to do. Another one of her loves... 
Kalise Bradshaw Davis. She's my great granddaughter. Great granddaughter. Yeah, my beloved. Is your beloved? My beloved number one. So yes. she, so she pretty. You can't put this on camera, you know. <laughs> your other grandchildren are going to be very upset with you. You see? You know what they say about laughter. But even while remedying the soul, she was able to take us through a dark period in her life, one that coincidentally had historical significance. My husband was badly beaten at that time, had to be treated at the hospital. She recalls what is now known as Black Saturday, a term used when referring to the labor unrest of 1946. Her husband, Donald Espute, was picketing when he got caught up in the turmoil that ensued. I was on my way to town, to Kingston and I heard what was going on and I climbed up the window door. My husband was by, was by the gate or by the top gate. Duffy gate? No, not Duffy gate, Duffy gate is up, oh. so. We, we're talking about Vinwood Road, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, the top gate of Bellevue, Bellevue. She encountered a difficult period due to her husband's poor health and the long trial that followed. All that she recalled while still being able to laugh at her near-death experience. I had to run for my life too. Yeah. At the time? Yeah. I will soon see me here now. <laughs> she admits she isn't very active these days due to pains in her leg, but even so, she is making strides. What could her secret be? Is it exercise? A secret diet? I don't know where I live, so it's just by God's help. Of course, a little exercise and diet can only help. After all, faith without works is dead. And Miss Hazel is all about her faith. The centenarian still visits church, mostly during Easter, as they depend on her every year for the crucifixion poem. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Hear his voice lifted in his last great cry. It is finished. The bridge of redemption complete. Fall on your knees. All the end of the earth and be now saved. And just like that, we're signing out for today, but not to worry, you can re-watch this offering or other content like this by visiting our website, jis.gov.jm. Do join us again tomorrow, same time on the same station as we bring another informative, educational and entertaining package of Jamaica Magazine. Until then, I'm Adrian Atkinson, thanking you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.